All right, guys, so what is the ecological difference between saltwater crabs, land crabs, brackish crabs, and freshwater crabs? It comes down to the difference between R and K selection. It's an ecological or biological concept originally proposed by Robert MacArthur and E. O. Wilson in 1967. I am going to be reading some info off my laptop, and the link that I'm using can be found in the description below. I did go over this in one of my ecology classes, but I don't have perfect memory, so please forget the fact that I'm using my laptop and looking at it. But basically, all selected species are highly variable in their population structure. So they have to have a lot of offspring and they don't typically have a lot of parental care. In relation to crabs, those are the certain land crabs that are not independent from the ocean, such as the Christmas Island crabs and other such crabs. There are also the brackish crabs that live in the mangrove forest, red clawed crabs, on example of those and the ones that live in the mud flats like the fiddler crabs. And there are also the saltwater crabs that we sometimes get in the crams like the Sally Lightfoot crab, the saltwater pom pom crab, and all of those species. And they typically for the crabs they have small eggs and thousands to maybe millions of them depending on the size of the mother. A really good example of one of those types of crabs from the saltwater realm would be the blue crab that a lot of people like to eat. And I have gotten a question on if I'm keeping those and I am not. But hopefully in the future after I breed all the freshwater crabs, I'll be able to do that. Now the case selected species, which is the kind of the opposite of this. And there are exceptions within the group, so not all all selected crabs may exhibit high numbers of offspring, etc. It depends on the population itself and the structure, the dynamics of the population, the community and everything. So there are going to be exceptions for each of these. It's not set in stone, but it's a very good general idea of what's going on. The case selected species are those mainly in freshwater environments. These are the panther crab, the popamatono crab, vampire crabs, onchampanillo, white onchampanillo, mandarin crabs, all the crabs that I have on my list to get by May 2019, and all of the crabs I will be getting in for the next two to five years, more than likely, are all going to be in the families that I will go over next week. And they are mostly, again, there may be some exceptions that I do not currently know of, but for the most part, there will be case selected species. And I did just realize I have been doing this video, it's really messy here, so. <sighs> what the cop? Alright, so I do apologize for not having my hair combed. I have just combed it, so it shouldn't bug you that much now. I know it won't bug me. But basically, as I was saying, most, if not all, there might be some exceptions of case-selected species live in very stable population structures, very stable communities that have been like that for a very long time. So they have few offspring. And in the case of crabs, they have larger eggs because they don't need to have 20 million eggs underneath their telson. And they also... And they also have highly competitive structures with resources, food, etc. So a lot of these species, they might be able to be kept in colonies in a very big tank. At least that's what I'm drawing from this. But... More than likely, in my case especially, I'm keeping them one per 10 gallon. You might be able to have two per 20 long. Don't quote me on that. I might try that down the line, but I'm not going to right now. But right now, I insert a table.
from this website that I'm using on the screen and I'll just voice over the next part of it. So as you can see there's the features column, all selection, and case selection. As far as the examples they give, obviously I could do a little better as far as making it more specific towards this video, but I might not have the ability to do that. If I do, you'll see it right now. So as far as what this chart means to the breeding and raising of these animals, the development and reproductive age go together. So the development in all selection, which again, all the saltwater, non-independent land crabs, those that still have to use the ocean for reproduction, as well as the brackish water crabs, they have rapid development, whereas the case selection, which are the freshwater crabs, have slow development. That basically means what it says in reproductive age, two rows down. The brackish, salt, and land crabs will have only reproductive age. They grow quickly. They will reproduce sooner. And they have a lot of offspring. Whereas the freshwater crabs, like the panther crabs, which is something I found out when researching them for the six months before I first got the panthers, they generally reproduce late in their life. The saltwater species and this is really where it gets skewed as far as crabs go. The body size is generally small, whereas the freshwater crabs are generally large. That doesn't hold true in the case of crabs. For the most part, you can see large crabs in saltwater and small crabs in freshwater. It just happens. The reproductive type, the I'm going to ignore the ones in parentheses, but as saltwater species, as exemplified in the blue crab, they come to a terminal molt, mate, and they die. They only mate once. Whereas the freshwater crabs have repeated re matings in theory. The length of life is said to be short with the saltwater crabs, according to this, and long with the freshwater crabs, which is great if you're trying to keep them in captivity and you want them as a pet because they won't die in two to four. I mean, they may die in two to four years, but they won't die in like one to two years. But that also depends on the temperature you keep them in and everything else. And keep in mind, all numbers I'm saying are arbitrary. I don't know the lifespan of these crabs yet. The competitive ability is going to be weak for saltwater crabs and strong for freshwater crabs. Now as far as what this means for breeding them, because they have slow development and they reproduce late in their life, I'm going to have to keep these crabs for longer to be able to breed them. A lot of crabs and animals you get in the hobby are smaller juvenile crabs. So it may take a few months, possibly a year, for me to raise them to the point that I can actually breed them. And it may take me another four to six months to be able to raise them to a point that I can sell them. And because they have very low quantities of offspring, it also means I'm not going to have a lot to sell unless I get like 20 females or something which I will be number crunching all of this once I breed them a few times. But they're probably not the best species for wholesalers and even just breeders in general to try to breed on the scale that I will be trying to breed them on. But the reason why I'm trying to do this is because there is one species that is available in the European hobby that's not available in the American hobby yet that is vulnerable due to the aquarium hobby. If you remember my video on who am I and what started me on this journey, it's gonna be on this side, you'll remember that 
I found a picture of a Denison's Bob and found out it was in danger due to a hobby. So, even though it may not be the best animals to breed because they do have, they do re reproduce late in the life and they are slow to grow, I'm still going to do this because it means a lot to me personally. So, it may not be profitable. I still think these will be the next big thing because shrimps used to be the same way and then they exploded. Of course, shrimps you can keep in a colony with like 200 individuals and like a 10 or 20 long. With crabs, you can only keep one or two. One in a 10 gallon, I'd say, and two in a 20 long. Not the best like odds for that to happen, but with their immensely interesting behavior, their feeding behavior. Totally gobbling it up. Suffice to go to crab. and everything else, I think they have potential. Then again, I'm biased because I'm a world crab. So, the last thing I just want to mention is thank you for 61 subscribers. This channel has come a long way from when I started to back up from that video that I mentioned would be up here a while back, like two minutes for you. Not that bad, <laughs> but I will be doing profiles on the crabs I keep so that you guys can know how I keep them and how I've had success with them. I won't likely include any breeding stuff in there because I may not be able to breed them in time to do that, but I will be keeping them for a decent amount of time. I've had these crabs for over six months, so I know, and I've kept them in various setups as well. I've kept them in small containers, I've kept them in a 29 that are just floating in these, in the containers they ship them in. I've kept them in like a 40 breeder with eight of them in like decent sized container. It was one of the Mitznet's containers. I kept them in one of each of the, one in each of those. And I've kept them in like a colony setup unintentionally. And that stressed me out because I thought they were going to kill each other. They're said to be territorial, so I don't want them to die. And so basically I have a lot of credentials and reputation with these crabs. I haven't had the best success with them, obviously. Fell a breeding attempt, two of them died before that. So I have five out of eight left, but given, I guess two of those were my fault. One of them I didn't, I mean, I just tried to handle it too soon, and something happened in the process that probably ended up killing them. But, you know, life happens, and you're not always going to be able to keep them to the fullest potential. I'm trying to keep them the healthiest and the happiest they can be, but even I make mistakes. I mean, I'm the only one doing this that I know of, and I'm the only one who knows this much about these crabs that I know of. I do tend to be not the most social person, so there may be someone out there who does this on a larger scale already. I don't know them though. And I have tried looking into Google and everything else because I am trying to get my master's and PhD at some point. So I have kind of done some research into that end of things. But even though I'm kind of the leading expert in this, I'm still a novice at this point. And I'm still learning. I'm just hoping to help you guys keep these crabs. And if you figure out how to breed them, congratulations. Unfortunately, since this is a business, even though I do plan on going nonprofit, I still need to make money. So I'm not going to reveal everything to you guys. Just the full disclaimer if you're watching it at this point, you kind of deserve that. 
because this will be an 8 to 10 minute video. But that's about all I have to say. Thank you so much, as I said, for 61 subscribers. Join the Crab Fam if you want, and have a great day. Oh, and Happy New Year's.